Okay. All right. So, uh, hey, I'm Doug Padgett and Phyllis Tickle. Uh, we're going to be chatting about Lent in the uh, emerging culture and in the event of age. And I'm in Minneapolis, and Phyllis is in Lucy Farm, Tennessee. That's right. Yeah, Lucy, Tennessee. Tennessee. <laughs> oh, Lucy, Tennessee, not Lucy Farm. Lucy, Tennessee, the farm in Lucy. Yes. Yeah, you're on the farm in Lucy. <laughs> well, Phyllis, thanks, thanks so much. And I know that much of your thinking and writing and, and um, communicating has involved some of the traditions of Christianity and some of the traditions oh, sure. of, of the church. And um, as, we, as we're as we in Lent, we're going to be chatting here on the Patheos blog about Lent in this current age that we live in. Uh, you write a lot about the great emergence and the emerging changes that are happening in society and, and in Christianity. And, sure. and I try to put that under the banner of inventive age cultural shifts. Um, so what are your thoughts about... Uh, about Lent as it's implicated by or as it affects our thinking about the world that we live in and what we're what we should be about in the uh, beginning part of the 21st century. Sure, I don't think there's any real difference between uh, the Great Emergence, if that's the label that's going to uh, stick with it, or the Inventive Age, or um, you know Elizabeth Drescher's uh, the, Reform uh, the the Digital Reformation, uh, uh -huh. uh, various names for. It. I think they all recognize the fact that. We have come, if nothing else, to the end of Christendom, um, that post-Constantinian uh, Christianity is upon us. I think that's what we're really talking about. Mm -hmm. And one of the interesting things that always happens when we go through one of these huge upheavals, um, like the one we're going through, is we always, well, we do two or three things. We always need to go back to the beginning and look again. And I think a big part of the return to liturgy, I think a big part of the uh, the call to it, um, uh, the interest, for instance, in Lent has its roots in that. And then we also become more physical uh, for some reason. It's as if we, we've we gotten uh, into our heads as far as we can go and we didn't like the terrain in there. Yeah. So <laughs> can we come back out here and start again? And, uh, of course, of all of the Christian holidays, of, of all of the observances of Christianity, mm -hmm. Lent is far and away the most physical. Yeah, right. Starting, starting not with Ash Wednesday, but with Mardi Gras. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I know. That's the, oh one yeah, of my favorite how parts. cool is that? The party uh, before you know, the uh, before the giving you up. You don't even have to be Christian to right. to understand both the fun of it, obviously, yeah. and and the psychology behind it. Um, well, and let's, let's, let's you know, just gonna have a big one. I mean, eat so much food that inevitably you're going to have to drink off some of it, right? right, right. And then misbehave some of the right. calories off. Uh, you know, all in the name of getting ready uh, to be very sober-sided and godly. Uh, yeah. I think that's the way, I think God is amused. Uh, yeah. uh, and so it's, uh, and then you go from there, of course, to that very physical thing of, of the laying on of the ashes. And as you know, I'm sure, um, Though I'm not sure that um, all Christians know what's happening, but you've taken the ashes, uh, mm -hmm. you've made the, the ashes branches, rather yeah. from from the palms of uh, Palm Sunday from the year before, yeah. so that right after Palm Sunday, the clergy or, or the sexton or someone collects all of the palms from the floor and everywhere they've been uh, mm -hmm. used in the service, and then burns them, charge them, and the ashes are blessed by the priest and then used on Ash Wednesday of the following year to mark the forehead. The most uh, emergent story I know about, um, and maybe my favorite, about Ash Wednesday happened uh, some four or five years ago at St. Gregory of Nyssa yeah. in San Francisco. Yeah, Sarah Miles tells this story. Yeah. I shouldn't be telling her no, story. No, it's a good story. Uh, and, and, and so far as I know, they continue to do it where, um, because it is an emergence church in every way, and they got the notion that maybe they would go to the BARTA uh, stations, all of the places where the underground and the overground comes and spills out passengers and you, you connect to the Bay Area transit, rapid transit again. And just as people were coming off the trains or getting ready to go, stand there with ashes in their hand and say, would you like to be marked? Um, mm -hmm. And she tells so poignantly uh, the story about the first year they did it over 800 people. Not that they were counting exactly, but eventually they started counting. So they know over 800 people stopped and said yes. And then she tells the rather tearful tale, and when she does it, that um, not only did they take it, but many people said, you know, I didn't have time to go to church, and it never occurred to me church would come to me, or something yeah. very, or I have not done this since I was a child, thank you, or something, um, which I think is, is not only a poignant story, but it sure is indicative of, of the kind of pullback 
know, what was it that church did? What what were the things that marked my body? Um, I think of it, I, as you know, and more a student of emergence than an actually, uh, um, an actually card carrying good one. I'm probably a hypnotic, but but one of the one of the things that fascinates me is the incarnational emphasis, uh, and that doesn't mean Jesus or God becoming man. That means yeah. the need to feel religion on one's body to know it physically, the reuniting as once it was united right. of body, mind, and spirit into an indivisible, before Plato came along and separated yeah, right, them all right, into right, hunks right. and, 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 and then theologians doubled down, Constantinople, right. we should never have had the old boy. Yeah. But nonetheless, um, before we we lost that unity, it's the rediscovery of it. And let's an exercise in that rediscovery at every step of the way. 